So I'm sure everyone's heard by now, Microsoft has gotten the EU's approval to go on with the Activision merger. This is actually quite big news. I've been talking just a you know, few days ago, or I continued whatever it is that I stopped talking about Microsoft in the new generation of consoles from like two years ago, about how I thought they had a plan to basically come into this generation and be formidable. At that time, Game Pass was their major way of going and also a lot of different concessions that they made like making their platform quite available for this new generation, making the Series S, uh, and also allowing for you to be able to acquire these uh, consoles using a low financing option, using one of their you know interesting services. That financing option was like a, a 0% interest for like the, I think, 36 months or so when you got it or 24 months. And basically, you paid it off without any hitches. Now, when we got to hear this news today, a lot of people were quite surprised. I was surprised. There's no way I would have predicted that this was going to be the case, especially seeing how the you know CMA in the UK had already initially blocked this deal. But there were people who had indicated from their analyses that the EU was going to go ahead and approve this deal because the EU had a better understanding of the way things were running. And it appears to me that the UK possibly did not have an understanding of what it is that they were saying, because all the EU did was say, well, Microsoft needs to go ahead and automatically offer their, you know, games from Activision Blizzard simultaneously or automatically to other competing, uh, you know, members of the cloud services. So it appears a CMA that is citing cloud concerns is probably now in a really weird spot because they've decided that this is the route they're going to go to block it when they could have just, in a sense, recommended those remedies that Microsoft was already trying to mitigate in the first place. I mean, Microsoft offered a deal to you know NVIDIA with their cloud services to bring Call of Duty to NVIDIA. Microsoft is not interested, from what they've been saying anyways, to keep their games exclusive. Now, this is also resonating in all of the gaming space. Like I tell people, I don't necessarily have an interest in any of the consoles. The Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, I've told my audiences here that these are more than likely going to be the last consoles that I buy. However, with the way Game Pass is, it is a very, very attractive proposition that they are offering for people. Because what this means now is... All you need to do is pretty much get yourself a Game Pass subscription. If it's going to go up, it'll be fine. If it doesn't go up, it'll be really lethal (laughs) for other competitors. And I can tell you that the way that Microsoft is probably going to do this is they're probably going to go ahead and do exactly what the gentleman, Michael Practor, said when he was on Destin's channel doing that interview. A lot of people also said from my last video that Proctor is always wrong, man. You know, he's always wrong. The truth is, I don't know who he is. The first time I ever saw him or heard from him was on Destin's channel. But what he said about all of this seemed to make a lot more sense than anybody else. This is why I thought that his analysis, in my opinion, was quite strong in his position. That's basically where he landed. Like, let's think about it this way. So first thing he said was, if the CMA were to go ahead and block, and I remember, this is just off the top of my head, but I think I remember exactly where he came from, and I can probably cite what he said, not verbatim, but he said this, or he made mention to this. If the CMA were to go, the CMA were to go ahead and block the deal, that Microsoft could just go ahead and create, uh, you know, some kind of an Activision, um, you know, entity that is pretty much called Activision uh, PLC, Activision UK PLC, who would then distribute Call of Duty to the UK. This is a way for them to possibly be able to go ahead and circumvent it if they did not go ahead and appeal. So he was quite on the money that there was the you know possibility that the CMA was going to block it in his first interview anyways. That's what he said. His second interview, I don't really know what he had said. But then in his you know analysis, he also said the EU was going to go ahead and approve it. So apparently that is something that's quite interesting to go ahead and see. And I think this continues to put, you know, the competitive uh, pressure on both sides now. Not only is Microsoft about to spend $70 billion, they have to now manage, you know, this new entity that they're pretty much bringing into their ecosystem, which is Activision and all of its games in the EU specifically and in the regions that have already approved this, by the way. I don't know if many of you know this is really huge. The EU has now approved it. So that's basically a lot of countries, save the UK. Um, And then you also have the approval that had gone through in Brazil. I think you also had some other approvals uh, in South Africa and some other regions. So basically what we have now is the FTC who 
in my opinion, doesn't necessarily seem to have too much of a strong case against Microsoft, especially now that the EU has actually gone full blown, you know, um, you know, approval in this sense. The FTC and the CMA might be looking really different right now. Now, this doesn't mean the CMA is going to change their minds. I'm not saying that, but it just makes things really interesting because at this point in time, Microsoft can just spend all of their efforts now in fighting and appealing whatever decisions, you know, things come out to be. So the really interesting thing that we have to pretty much be looking forward to is not only is this going to bring Call of Duty to more people, it's going to bring Activision's library as well. And that is what is very interesting and important because this is going to really test Microsoft's commitment as to how they want to go ahead and bring it. So the position right now of Microsoft is so much more stronger than you would have imagined just because, you know, this one thing was actually put in there. Because, I mean, you know, look at the memes already coming out. You know, th this is the really interesting thing about the memes. Uh, they usually find themselves on one side of the position leaning uh, with whomever the tide is running, you know, for whomever the tide is, uh, is, is for when whomever the tide is against is the person that they're going to be memeing against. I'm not here for the meme wars. I'm here for us to follow the story closely. I'm here for us to follow what Microsoft's position is going to be. And I would not be surprised, even if people may not go ahead and trade their PlayStations, that people start finding themselves somewhere, somehow in a Microsoft ecosystem, because there'll be a slew of games that you can get your hands on for very little amounts of money. Eventually, the financial side is where Microsoft is seemingly wanting to punch Sony in the gut with. And that financial side is the value proposition. Basically, the fact that Microsoft is going to be able to deliver a bunch of video games into your hands for a short, you know, for a short period of time anyways, but for a small amount of money. That is a very huge deal when it comes to gaming, especially the fact that gaming is ubiquitous and quite pricey. I mean, let's think about it. You know, in this in the gaming scene, you know, games are, are one of those things where for you to go ahead and buy yourself a video game, you know, even though they go on sale often, there are tons and tons of them that are made, uh, you know, over time. So your pockets are going to need to be very fortified. Hence, a subscription model in your side pocket might not harm you. You know, as you're buying your titles that you actually want, that you want to own physical copies of, or if you want digital libraries of them, you can still be buying them. But a subscription can kind of give you that extra, you know, fortification because gamers don't like to miss out. This is a core aspect that Phil Spencer has understood. And so he's, you know, basically playing on that particular uh, notion of players not wanting to miss out, uh, you know, on much and is now using it to offer gamers and say, OK, you don't like missing out. Let me just give you everything that you probably, you know, might have just thought about in your mind for a very small amount of money at the moment. So this is going to be really interesting to take a look at overall. I'm looking forward to seeing how things are going to go. Eh, this is one of those things where, you know, at the end of the day, I kind of was in a position where I wanted this to go through. Then I kind of changed my mind a little bit because I'm just like, man, this is going to make Microsoft really strong. But some people are making some cases saying that, you know, Sony is also already strong. So it doesn't really matter. It's going to level the playing field because the PlayStation Plus subscription base is already huge. If PlayStation were to offer something like a library of this kind, then it's possible that that provides a lot of stiff competition for Microsoft. So what Microsoft actually would have now is being willing to pretty much go nuts, like give you their games day one, something that's going to push PlayStation uh, to either make a change towards their you know business model or maybe continue competing even much harder uh, you know, with what they already have established. So let me hear your thoughts in the uh, comment section. Thanks so much for watching the video. I appreciate you guys' time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.